And welcome back. In this video, we get turned up. Here I have the four piston ported oil pump and sure you don't need this, it can be overkill for some people. But to me it's just more peace of mind so I opted for the more expensive version which is basically you get the entire kit. Now this is an OEM baffle straight from Honda and you can see the stampings are kind of rough around the edges so I'm using my flathead screwdriver here to try to remove some of that. I also need a file yet I don't have one so I'm gonna have to raid my daughter's stash just one more time. Now that I've completed Mission Impossible without getting caught, it's time to engage Spirit Fingers. I'm trying to get this baffle to look a little bit better just to remove uh, all the rough edges but not go too crazy with it. Once I was done filing, a quick wash and some brake parts cleaner did the trick. Now it's time to install the baffle but first you want to make sure you have a bolt threaded into this hole right here because if you don't you're going to have low oil pressure once you start up the engine. Now we can install the bolts. One thing I didn't like about the kit is it doesn't actually include these bolts. I had to go to my local auto parts store and pick them up. It's not that big of a deal but it kind of is disappointing to see them not included in the kit. For this step you want to make sure you're using your special impacting ratchet. If you can't find one at your local auto parts store try hitting up your Mako or your Snap-on guy. I'm sure he'll be more than happy to sell you one. And if you're lucky, your tool guy will have this Meow Mix torque wrench. With the baffle installed, you can see it just barely clears the fastener that we have installed so we don't have low oil pressure. The nice thing about this is if that fastener were to ever back out for some reason, it can't completely come out because the baffle is holding it in place. And now we can take a closer look at the 4 piston oil pump. What really caught my eye is the fact that it's already cut to fit a K24. If you buy this pump directly from Honda, it's not going to fit a K24 and you're going to have to do your own legwork as far as cutting it to make it fit. And 4 piston did a great job at that. So that alone was worth it to me, but it's also ported internally for increased oil flow. That's just an added perk as far as I'm concerned and extra security. And just in case anyone's ever trying to sell you a 4P oil pump on uh, the black market, <laughs> you can see it's engraved here with the 4P logo. Uh, granted, it's not the best engraving. It's not as fancy as the ones they put on their cylinder heads, but it's still something to give, uh, give you an indication if it really is a 4P oil pump. But once you open it up, you should be able to tell if it was ported or not. Now I don't have a stock oil pump to compare this to and I'm definitely not going to speak for 4 pistons so if you want any details as far as what was done to this pump you might want to contact them. But a quick overlook on the pickup side if you look deep inside of there it does look like they tried to smooth out some of the casting but this side is the most noticeable as far as the work that they've done. So in case you were wondering what's inside of an oil pump and what makes it work, this is it right here. This is the heart of the oil pump.
The most noticeable work is right here in this corner. You can see as the oil is trying to leave the pump, it looks like it's gonna hit the wall and then has to make a left turn, which really isn't good for oil flow. So this corner looks like they tried to remove a lot of material off of the inside corner just to give it an easier transition for the oil to escape. This is where bagging and tagging everything really helps. This stuff has been sitting in these bags for a while. I want to say about three years. Now, when I was initially putting all this stuff together, I didn't notice the wear that's on this sprocket. You could see where the chain is kind of digging into it. And it looks bad on camera, but really it's not that bad. If I run my finger across it, it's barely even noticeable. So what do you guys think? You think I should replace it or should I just keep it on there because everything's already assembled and it is a OEM Honda part. You think it'll last? Now, just as I'm doing here, you want to make sure you install the chain while you're installing the pump. Because if you install the pump and you forget the chain, well, you're going to have to pull the pump off again because there's no way of getting the chain on afterwards. All you have to do now is turn the sprocket until it falls into place and you'll notice it's in place when you won't be able to spin it anymore. The oil pump itself is supplied with three fasteners. One is too long, another is too short, and the middle one is just right. <laughs> Obviously there's different lanes so they're going to go in their respective place and it's pretty hard to mess that up. Next we can install the chains guide. Now this one was supplied in the kit but you're going to have to reuse your original fasteners. Okay, so now it's time to install the tensioner. Now this tensioner was not supplied in the kit and I had to buy it separate. As you can see, I picked up a Beck Arnley part so it's not an OEM Honda part. Um, once I got it, I was kind of comparing it to the original one. Uh, the color difference, don't mind that because the old one is just tainted from years of oil and things like that. That's why the color has changed on it. I'm sure it started off its life as uh, the same color as this one. But one thing I noticed is that the tension on the back only part just doesn't feel as strong as the tension on the original Honda part. Now, maybe that's just because the plastic lining on the part has been like work hardened kind of, you know, maybe the plastic is just old and brittle and that's what makes it feel stiffer, you know, harder to compress the, the springs on it. But it's, it's definitely noticeable that the new part, the tension just doesn't feel as strong. Now I'm still going to go ahead and use the part anyway, but it's just something to note and keep in mind. And here goes the original uh, part that was on this side. You could see the color difference. And again, it's just the oil over the years changes the color of it. And that's it for this one. So in the next video, I think we're going to be installing the cylinder head on the block simply because I don't see no other direction to go with this. Now here's something that's pretty neat I put together at the end. It's stop motion. Now this is one rotation of the crank. It took me about an hour to shoot about 400 photos. And you could actually see in the background how I'm losing daylight. All of this work just to get like a six second clip. And we are done here. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram. It's where I post all my updates. I hope you consider subscribing. And like always, thanks for watching.
Thank mm-hmm. you.